Hi, good morning. Uh, my name is David Kingshoff from Pacific Dakota Restorations and I'd like to welcome you all to uh, Kabordja Airfield here, uh, just on the outside of uh, Brisbane in Australia. Um, it's going to get a little bit noisy, we've got an ultra gyro just about to go, but it's um, um, there's a way for the go. Kabocha is, um, um, oh, it's, a, it's a great little airfield here just on the outskirts of Brisbane. Uh, we have a variety of aircraft that fly in and out of here from ultra gyros as you've just seen, lots of ultralights, um, general aviation and then uh, we also have a good collection of World War One aeroplanes here and uh, Beaufort under restoration. Then we also have um, uh, some more of our warbirds uh, with uh, SNJ, Mustang, Wirraway, Windjill. And then our beautiful gal behind us, um, the C-47 Dakota. Um, just to give you a bit of an overview, Pacific Dakota Restorations um, has been started by my wife Kate and myself uh, to restore and preserve um, this aircraft, C-47-4348234, uh, back to flying condition. And also a nose section which we'll go and have a look at in, um, in a little bit. Um, this aircraft will fly again, hopefully uh, um, for Anzac Day in 2018 um, and then there's a few other uh, items which we've released recently which we're going to be um, planning on doing in 18 and 19. What we'd like to do is um, basically, well first thing I'd like to do is actually just thank basically everybody who's been supporting the project from uh, when we first got the aeroplane um, here a couple of years ago. Um, thank all our great volunteers for all their time, effort and um, putting up with me. <laughs> and. Um, um, and yeah, just no, just a great thank you to everybody who's um, you know, um, been keep following us through Facebook and social media, and um, I hope you still do, and uh, we'll do it into the future. It's going to be an exciting time. So Pacific Dakota Restorations, basically, um, it's set up uh, not only to restore and preserve the aeroplanes, but it's also to try and inspire people to believe in themselves, believe in their dreams, um, and also try and um, uh, support. Uh, members of our um, armed forces and um, uh, try and um, keep the history of what they've done in the past and current and future and um, um, yeah basically try and, try and preserve everything for the future generations. Uh, what I'd like to do is just give you a little bit of a tour around the aeroplane and um, show you a bit inside and what we're currently up to and then go into a bit of um, what's happening in the future. Um, if anybody has any questions, please feel free on to comments and um, uh, Colin, who um, is the instigator of this whole thing, trying to inspire, him, trying to embarrass his boss, is, um, <laughs> is, um, is uh, will kind of throw out some of the questions as they come through. But first, let's take you into the uh, cabin of the C-47. This aeroplane was built in 1943 uh, for the U.S. Army Air Force. Air Force. Um, operated came over to Australia in 44 and then over to New Guinea um, uh, serving for the US Army Air Force and served the rest of the World War II until coming over to uh, Australia for the DCA which is now CASA uh, Aviation Authority in 47. We'll go, go inside and show you what we've been up to. We're just in the process now of paint stripping the interior to um, bring the airplane back to as it was in World War II. Uh, so there's a little bit of a mess in here at the moment, um, but it's, um, we can show you what we've, uh, where, where we've been to at, at this stage. So last weekend we put um, we cottoned off this bay, this bay in the fuselage and um, um, put about three layers of paint strip on over the period of the weekend. And um, there's pretty much, well some bays up here are, are very, very good. And then coming down here we've got a little bit more work to do, but it's, uh, it's a long process unfortunately. And a very messy process as you can see. Um, what's been great though is in this whole project of where we got to at the moment is that the aircraft is in, extra in extraordinarily good condition for our age. Um, initial inspections I was kind of a little bit concerned about, you know, it's been sat outside, it hasn't flown for 30 years and, um, and corrosion build up from being in uh, museums and sat outside. The more we've taken off, the more we kind of um, are, are really happy with the condition. There's a little bit of corrosion here. Um, uh, but for an aircraft of, of her age, it's, um, uh, you know, there's always going to be a little bit here and there. But over, over, overall, it's um, in extremely good condition. Um, 
coming up, we can um, I'll see if all her life she's been pretty much, other than the military, she's been a cargo hauler flying crayfish from, um, uh, from Tasmania, uh, or Melbourne to Tasmania mostly. And uh, we actually have a guy who owns a hangar just over here, Jack McDonald, who owns a couple of World War I aeroplanes. He, um, um, he used to fly this particular aeroplane. And there's actually a bit of local history with this with a couple of engineers here that worked on it as well. Uh, so it's got quite a nice local, local history. Uh, coming up into the, up the cabin, we've got two, two of the fuel tanks uh, which have been removed to, um, uh, for pressure testing and inspection. Um, it isn't here for storage at the moment. And we're getting prepared to uh, paint strip up this area, so we're starting to look into the wiring and all that sort of stuff. Coming into the, uh, the cockpit here, this is where some of the initial modifications have been done. Uh, I mean, wartime, all this bay here would have. Um, you would have had a radio operator and navigator station. We're looking at the possibilities of um, putting those back in in the future. Um, but all of this area here was modified by uh, the Department of Civil Aviation um, uh, when the aircraft first came over here in 46-47. Uh, um, so it's, it was used for uh, navigation aid testing. Uh, it was one of two, um, uh, two aircraft uh, that were used for that. And then uh, commercial pilot examinations apparently as well. Um, so coming in here, we've got a, um, uh, our hydraulic bay. We've got the, um, a few items out at the moment. We've just taken the uh, accumulator out and the uh, reservoir. Um, I don't know if we can get enough light in here, but, um, uh, but there's actually, we found our first, I'll put a post up on Facebook with it a bit later, but we, um, um, we found just under here when we took the um, accumulator out, or some of the uh, stuff in here was, um, We've got um, an original signature from um, uh, somebody who built the airplane in Oklahoma in 1944, and um, which is an amazing find. And we've actually found a few signatures around the airplane since. And it just for for myself and the guys here, it's the guys and girls here. We're, yeah, that's part of what makes this so special is that you're revealing some of the the old history and keeping all this alive. And that sort of signature and uh, that part is just going to be preserved uh, forever. So it's uh, well, make sure that's all. Uh, correctly preserved and photographed, etc. Uh, so, uh, so people can see that in the future. Coming up into the cockpit, as per probably a fair few people probably saw last year, work phone calls. <laughs> um, um, so, but now we we decided on the was it the 80th anniversary of the first flight of the DC3 was going to be our last ground run uh, for the for the C47 until she um, uh, gets back to flying condition. So, um, so now we've taken the seats out uh, to start allowing access to do inspection work down here. Um, obviously the instrument panel, we're gonna to need to do some work and overhaul all the gauges and uh, throttle quadrant and then cables. Um, every part of this aeroplane is gonna be uh, gone, gone through um, at, in very, very fine detail. Um, all the flying control cables are gonna be changed. The instrumentation is gonna be overhauled. We've got to look into updating some of our avionics. Um, uh, a lot of this stuff is 1970s, 1960s um, um, generation of radios, so they're, um, they're, they're going to be um, removed. The autopilot, that's still original World War II, as well as most of the instrumentation in here. Um, the autopilot, we want to kind of try and keep in if we can, and uh, keep the look of the aeroplane as it would have done in, uh, been in World War II. Um, however, a few of the, uh, we're going to have some fascias put in there probably to cover up modern radios and navigation aids for, to allow us to do the flying that we, we wish to do. Um, the aeroplane, the aeroplane's going to be certified for passenger transport um, and um, IFR conditions uh, to allow us to do um, uh, the, uh, the exciting trip that we, um, uh, we released a few, uh, on the anniversary of D-Day, which was a flight to Normandy in 2019. Um, so the aeroplane needs to needs to be equipped to be able to cope with that sort of flight um, and operate safely and um, also allow us to do parachuting and also passenger transport. So the aeroplane is going to be um, in as, as new condition by the time, we, uh, by the time we're, we're ready for flight. Right. Just got a comment here from John saying I want to jump from this plane. <laughs> Fantastic. Well, that's it. There's definitely a possibility in the future, John, and um, uh, yeah, keep in contact and um, 
Um, yeah, we'll, we'll be uh, during the tour. We'll be doing a lot of parachuting out of the aeroplane, so that and we release some information about the groups that we're doing that with, and um, hopefully um, you can become a member of those groups and um, uh, be able to jump out the aeroplane in the future. Um, and we're looking probably doing some stuff with local, you know, Australian-based parachute schools and stuff as well. So um, yeah, definitely there'll be chances to jump out. And I, and I even mentioned it to um, one of the guys in Europe that um, uh, that I'm going to probably try and jump out of it as well over in Normandy. So. Um, which I never thought I'd ever say. <laughs> so, um, so I'm not really like landing in the aeroplane, but uh, I, it'd be something that you can not try and do. So it'd be, um, it'd be a superb experience. So. All right, we'll go for a wander out back outside. Oh, watch your head. <laughs> Kind of like our, our glider tug just um, disappearing off with uh, another glider under tow. Saturdays here, is, well, Saturdays and Sundays here in Caborcha can be pretty busy with uh, parachuting, um, uh, your ultralights flying around, and um, yeah, the gliders. So it gets a busy place and it's an amazing, amazing airfield to operate for. If you've got any questions, guys, just shoot them in the comments section and we'll try and answer them for you. I'll try not to fight <laughs> So basically, this is coming around here, this is a, a base of the wing attachment for the um, uh, for the DC-3 C-47. Um, the the wing on the DAC is uh, pretty remarkable in the way there's no big bolts to hold hold the wing on. It's basically attached by uh, what is it, 328 off memory um, bolts, which on each side, and they basically push through on two attachment angles here. From there you have these what we call waffle plates and you can see the marks just on the on the panel here. And what that does is me, these are actually protrude past the attachment angle of touch. So as you put the wing wing on, that actually compresses before the wing attach will completely compress it together. And that preloads the entire wing section and basically makes it a solid in theory a solid item. So these waffle plates they're critical in getting the, the dimensions there. Uh, correct for um, as, as the strength of the wing. Go through the undercarriage here for the C47, um, basically the same as the DC3 in a lot of ways. Um, we still got the original disc brakes on this on this one. The, it's all hydraulically operated, um, and um, during retraction, the wheel actually sits underneath. It hits two pads just about here, um, and the wheel actually sits underneath the oil cooler. So. Um, if you had a, a uh, had to land with the wheels in the up position, um, then um, uh, basically the, you would land and you actually um, you, know, you wouldn't actually hit the oil cooler at all. You might take a couple of aerials off, and if you're really quick, you could actually get the prop blades into a V, and um, yeah, you wouldn't even touch a prop blade. The engines um, uh, are powered by two Ram 1830 engines, each producing around 1,200 horsepower each. These engines, they're uh, 14 cylinder radials. Um, these on this aircraft are now time expired, so well, I think they've got about 10 hours to run. However, they've, they've been dormant for a number of years. So this is the, uh, basically, these two points here are gonna be one of the most expensive parts of the aeroplane to restore to get that flying. So we need uh, to overhaul the props and um, get uh, the two overhauled engines or overhaul these two. Um, so we're in a current process of working out how the best way to do that as, as we speak. Um, under here we've got um, uh, fuel tank fuel tank access. Uh, so all these are pretty loose at the moment. We've got all the four tanks out and um, we got them out recently to um, to inspect the corrosion on the wing spot. Um, yeah, these are, and the, the good thing is that um, um, there's been very limited corrosion found. The, um, a few of these stress panels need to be replaced or the attachment angles need to be replaced uh, due to a bit of corrosion on them and, and uh, some previous repair work. Um, into where Colin's pointing now you've got, um, or just rear of there, you've got where the fuel boost pumps and fuel pumps attached um, for the fuel system. Um, and then above there you have all of your, uh, uh, basically a nest full of um, cables pretty much. So all the lower cables here 
there's a few detention but they're basically your primary flying control cables for your ailerons, elevator, rudder and then above that uh, you have all of your um, engine controls um, so it's, um, um, yeah, it's a, an in interesting aeroplane to, um, to do rigging on there's a lot of cables in there uh, so all of those cables are going to be inspected throughout the range uh, all the flying control cables, primary ones, will be replaced as a matter of course Coming through, two batteries fit up in these two bays um, and they are as heavy as um, they're, they're, they're pretty heavy batteries, G88 if I remember correctly, batteries Up here we have our pedos, uh, they've been removed one was damaged because somebody in a past life but them decided to use it as something to hang off um, and then uh, for transport we took the other one uh, the other one off when we brought the airplane down from Ariba um, so that basically uh, gives the pilot and co-pilot their information for airspeed altitude um, uh, basically through through here coming through the nose um, uh, we can see uh, the, the old uh, markings of Oklahoma girl um, and um, this is a, a nose art that was put on the aeroplane in the 80s, if I remember correctly. Um, and you've got a um, ent forward entrance door. You're up the front here, then you've got uh, access, access into um, uh, the back of your instrumentation, your rudder pedals and things like that. So what we'll do, we'll take our wand back through this way and you can see a few of the things that we're doing. Um, both Colin and myself, we, um, uh, we both, our day jobs are pretty much working um, on this, well, not necessarily DC-3 or C-47s, but warbirds and classic aircraft for a living. Um, Colin's, um, Colin's my trusty apprentice and, um, and um, uh, I, uh, myself as chief engineer for a company called Complete Aircraft Care. Uh, just in the distance here, you can see um, uh, one of the aircraft we're currently working on, the Havilland Chipmunk. Um, and she's, a, she's a lovely little aeroplane. Uh, we work on about five or six of chipmunks. Um, and from my UK background, it's um, um, yeah, the first aircraft I ever flew in was a chipmunk, so it's um, uh, got, a, got a kind of nice appeal to them. What we're currently in the process of doing at the moment with the C-47 is um, uh, paint stripping a lot of our flying uh, well, our, our controls and like this is the uh, starboard tailplane for the aeroplane. Um, the tailplane connects in the same way as the, the wings in a lot of respects but then has a secondary attachment onto the fuselage. And then behind here you, uh, where, where you're, about, you're standing now would be, be where the elevator would sit. Um, the condition of these is good. Uh, very, very good indeed. Um, there's a little bit of corrosion and a few repairs to do. And every component that's coming off the aeroplane will be completely overhauled. Um, so we'll uh, go down into the... Um, so at the moment, this one, we've just been cleaning the, cleaning the, um, uh, cleaning the tailplane. Um, and now we'll, then we'll start paint stripping. So you can see, uh, coming into the hangar here, um, you can see um, uh, part of uh, what we've been up to today. Uh, you can see the two two wings uh, leaning up against the side of the, uh, the hangar. Uh, now those wings, um, we're in the process. We had a good survey of the wings. There's a few stringers which have got signs of corrosion um, and um, they need to be replaced or repaired. Um, but overall, uh, they're not in bad condition at all. The wing attach angles, uh, we need to do a, a dive penetrant check on those. But uh, from a visual inspection, they look good. And you can see the fin, uh, fin of the aeroplane just sitting here. And I, unfortunately, you probably won't be able to see it from um, uh, from the, the video, um, but you can actually still see the um, uh, the old uh, registration of um, uh, Charlie um, Alpha Oscar, CAO, when it when she was with the DCA. So that was her second second registration. The initial registration was. Um, Data Mike Victor, and that was named after a politician um, uh, when the aircraft came over in 40, 46, 47. Um, that registration lasted um, only a matter of months until uh, one of the current politicians at the time um, asked the question of why uh, the registrations were, um, well, what DMV standed for. And when they said it was uh, one, of, one, of, one of their competitors, uh, they said, well, that's not going to work. So they instantly changed it to civil aviation 
something. So this, uh, this aircraft called CAO. Uh, we actually, um, um, uh, when the aircraft first arrived here at Caborcha, um, uh, one, of our, one of our volunteers mentioned to me that they did a bit of searching and um, the DMV was actually a, a bonanza based at Caborcha. Um, so I, um, I went over to the owner and um, had a chat to him and um, uh, we now basically purchased they do a swap over for the, the registrations, so uh, we now um, have uh, held at the moment a Dalton White Victor for the aeroplane. So hopefully next week that'll all be finalised and um, uh, the aeroplane will actually have her first ever Australian registration again, uh, which will be fantastic. Woohoo! So, um, coming around here, um, uh, we can. Uh, meet a couple of our uh, fine volunteers. We have um, uh, Dan here and Danny. Um, um, uh, they're currently uh, paint stripping the uh, the, uh, the top of the tail plane, uh, the other uh, the port tail, the underside of the port tail plane, should I say? Um, Danny's actually studying to be an aircraft engineer at the moment with Aviation Australia. Um, so um, in, enjoying her time currently paint stripping the back. <laughs> so, um, so, so it's great to have uh, some very, very keen and um, enthusiastic volunteers and um, uh, we wouldn't happen without them, so we're indebted to everybody who's in, getting involved in this project. So lastly, what we're going to do uh, for this is um, uh, we'll take you into uh, the Caborcha Warplane and Heritage Museum. Um, we, a few of the aircraft, which um, um, Colin and myself and the other guys will work on them every day are in there, and so I'll show you those. Um, but also our no section, uh, which we're uh, currently converting into a, a flight simulator. Um, so I'll have a quick wander in and then show you show you around. And um, uh, if you have any questions, please ask, and we'll try and answer them as as bad as we can. So coming into here, we um, um, we have uh, North American SNJ. Um, She's a lovely aeroplane, um, um, owned by a, a syndicate of um, syndicate of people, um, and um, yeah, we look after this aeroplane, uh, and, uh, and she's, she's a really nice machine. The only aircraft that's missing out of this hangar at the moment is um, uh, the uh, Australian-built P-51 Mustang. Um, she's currently sitting in Maitland at the moment in New South Wales, and um, uh, we'll probably be back. I'll put in next week with the weather that's supposed to come through Kabulch in the next couple of days. Um, we also have um, uh, the Wirral, CAC Wirralway, um, and um, another aircraft we look after here, which is uh, uh, CAC Windjill. Um, a lot of English English guys and girls will probably notice a little similarity to um, uh, Piston Provost in the UK, um, but they're, they're kind of built for the same thing and kind of look relatively similar. And um, coming down here. What's in the box? What's in the box? It's an old Rolls Royce Merlin. <laughs> so actually a Packard built Merlin out of the Mustang. And uh, so it was removed about uh, two or three years ago. Um, and um, so what we're gonna do is make a little perspex front for it and put a light in there for the museum to use at the moment. Um, next is Beach 18, which unfortunately had an uh, incident um, on takeoff here just after Christmas. Um, so we're, we're currently in the process of um, rebuilding the aeroplane and finalising damage assessments. Um, so um, as you'll see in a second, we've got uh, um, the, both the wing tips which are damaged then in bits and um, assessing, assessing the repair and actually starting on the repairs now for this. So, but hopefully she'll be flying in October and as soon as this aeroplane leaves this hangar then hopefully the DAC will be coming into the hangar and taking a spot. Then in the distance here we have um, Freedom. Um, this this aircraft, or this last last part of his life, was spent on a pole at Cairns Airport, um, and then it was removed and uh, saved by Mike Sporting um, at North Queensland Warbirds. Um, this actually this is actually the reason why this project started. I uh, saw in, a, in the museum here actually there was a note on the um, on the notice board that the uh, this 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 was for sale. And I started talking to Mike Spaulding regarding the nose section, and then we got talking about the, the complete aircraft. 
and um, went up there for a visit, uh, had a look at, at both, and on the drive home, um, kind of then um, got to the point where we actually purchased the aeroplanes, and then um, flew home, and then um, had to mention it to my wife when I got home, and she was very supportive, luckily. <laughs> so it's, uh, um, uh, I think she knew that it was going to happen. But, um, this particular aircraft, though, uh, we've done a lot of uh, research into the history, and um, it's extremely, it's got a very ex extremely interesting history. She was um, built uh, for the Royal, Royal Air Force in the UK, and on arrival, she went to Presswick and was converted to a, um, um, a VIP aircraft and assigned um, to Field Marshal Maitland, um, who was the head of the Mediterranean Theatre during World War II. Um, this aeroplane, um, actually over Christmas, we were doing some more research, and it had the same, same crew flew it throughout the whole of World War II. Um, they did, I think, uh, memory 1,250 hours during World War II in this aeroplane on the same engine, same crew, uh, and operated all the way through Africa um, and Europe, going to forward fighter bases and um, um, basically giving out medals, commemorations, and um, um, and basically uh, wherever, anywhere where Field Marshal Maitland needed to go. Over Christmas, we actually found photos doing some research on the pilot. Um, uh, we found photos of um, uh, Winston Churchill in the right-hand seat actually flying this, this actual aeroplane. And also, um, yeah, Winston Churchill flew it for about 14 days, or flew in it for 14 days, um, forward fighter bases. Then the aeroplane was loaned to the King of England, and the King of England did exactly the same thing for about 14, 15 days. And um, we have photos with some signatures and stuff like that we found of that, which is really cool. As, um, um, the... Um, um, the of a weird thing as well, the, the pilot, they got the captain of the aeroplane, he was actually, he was born in the village, there's a small village in England and where my, my, my family lived and where I lived for a long period of time and he was actually born in that little village and he did his first flight training in the same airfield I did, so it's kind of a bit, uh, it's kind of small world in that respect. This no section, it's new life basically is going to be um, in an aid to what one of the big things that we want to do here at Pacific Dakota Restorations and that's education and um, inspiring kids and, and adults, but uh, you know, and, you know, hopefully encouraging people to believe in themselves, believe their dreams. So the, the no section is going to become a flight simulator. Um, so we're going to hope to get partly approved so we can reduce some of the in-flight training we need to do on the, the flying aircraft. But then also be able to do um, stuff with local schools, universities, and um, youth groups and the general public who come, come past and we can actually let them have a go at flying uh, a decent replica of the DC-3, a C-47, and um, learn more about what the aircraft did during wartime and, um, um, and, and, the, and the future. Well, I hope this little brief um, uh, run around of um, what we're doing here is, is of interest, and, um, um, and if, if so, then we'll um, uh, look at doing a few more. Uh, well, hopefully I'll, I'll get better at doing the, um, uh, the presentation side of it. I'm kind of new to this sort of thing. Um, and um, yeah, we'll go through um, some more of um, what, we can, what we're doing here with our future projects and um, future trips. Um, and, um, so Dave, um, if someone wants to help out with the project, um, how can they do that? Uh, one of the best ways at the moment is going through our Facebook page or website. Um, the website's just about to have a bit of a revamp, um, uh, but if you want to contact us through Facebook, uh, through Messenger, and I'll come directly to myself or, or Kate, and, um, and we'll get back to you. But, um, but yeah, it would be a pleasure to have any people, in, as many people as we can involved. That's one of the things we really want to look at with this is, like, when I first got into the industry, um, um, it's, very, it's a very closed group to a degree. And um, um, what we want to do is basically make it accessible to everybody. So anybody who wants to help, doesn't matter, way, matter what your background is, you know, we want to try and um, uh, assist, assist in you becoming involved. All right, well, thank you very much. And um, uh, any questions, please continue posting them, and I'll try and do them on um, uh, Messenger a bit later today uh, or on Facebook comments. And, um, but no, thank you very much for your time, and um, yeah, look forward to doing this again. Thank you.